They are beautiful, large, fragile, active, and dangerous. We often underestimate its capability, especially when it comes to earthquakes. Please pay attention. The information you are about to hear may help you save your life. Many of us in San Bernardino may not be aware of one of the largest major landmarks in California, and it is because it is about walking distance away that we need to be more informed of this. Of course, I am talking about the San Andreas Fault. This fault is a strike-slip fault that separates California in two down from the border to Mexico and up to its northern beaches. Unlike convergent or divergent plate boundaries, where plate boundaries either push directly toward or apart from each other, a strike-slip fault slides past each other. Simply taking a look at the mountains this fault has caused can really give us a clearer understanding of how powerful it is. According to a new study by Yuri Fialco, an expert geologist and professor at the University of California, San Diego, the fault has been stressed to a level sufficient for the next big one. An earthquake of magnitude 7 or greater and the risk of a large earthquake in this region may be increasing faster than research had believed. A reminder of the last 7.0 magnitude earthquake in Haiti can really give us a clear understanding of the destructive power earthquakes can have. It is very possible that an earthquake as large as this or even larger can happen within our lifetimes. I urge you to prepare yourself for the next big one because when it happens, it will severely damage the infrastructure built between our communities. We should expect resources such as water, electricity, food, gas, and other crucial supplies to become very limited. It will happen. The only thing we can do about it is to be prepared. Here with me is our very own Professor Frixo to give us a better understanding of the San Andreas Fault, what to expect for San Bernardino and our campus, and to give us helpful advice for preparation. Once there's a big earthquake, there are always aftershocks. During the earthquake, drop, cover, and hold on. Your gut is going to want you to run outside. The perimeter of the building is the most dangerous place possible. So all the glass breaks, anything that's falling out the outside of the building is going to fall right there. People who die in earthquakes in California die because they run outside. So take yourself firmly by the hand and get under the table. Once it's the shaking has stopped, get outside to an open area because that's the safest possible position to be in. If you're already outside, stay there. If you've got nothing, water is the first on your list. After that, food should be next. Things are going to be in a mess for at least a couple of weeks. So. You know, they, the emergency recommendations are three days of food and water. It's like, I'd, I'd bump that up a few more days at least because you know things aren't going to be back to normal after a major earthquake. So, water in your car because most of us are not walking distance from our house. Assume the utilities are going to go down. You know, you, you shake the ground that much, especially power lines are going to go down. And, you know, so the electricity is going to go off. It's entirely plausible that you know, there will be some rupture of a water main somewhere, so I would assume that the water's going to be off. The you know, natural gas pipeline crosses the San Andreas Fault up in Cajon Pass. The, the damage is going to be a function of, you know, given that it's a strong earthquake, the distance from the epicenter, because the damage is going to generally decrease the further away you get, but also depends on what, what's in the subsurface. If you're built on loose sediment, especially if it's deep loose sediment, that amplifies the ground shaking the same way jello reacts. You know, it'll just shake more. So parts of San Bernardino that are built on, on deep valley fill, which is unfortunately like downtown San Bernardino, Colton area, they'll experience more severe ground shaking just because of the nature of what they're built on. If you're close to the fault, if you're in that zone where things are bending in between earthquakes, and then when it actually ruptures, that bend 
snaps back to its original shape. And so within that, that happens again like five to eight miles out from the fault itself. In that zone you have the ground accelerating laterally. It goes from like sitting still to moving really fast. It, and it doesn't do that for very long, only for a few seconds. I expect campus will fundamentally be okay, although it'll be a big mess. And of course campus is in that zone of acceleration. Now that's one reason that the buildings all have deep footings and basements. The buildings are well anchored to the ground, so when the ground moves, the building will move with it. That being said, that's an additional cause of potential damage. But houses that aren't well fastened to their foundations may well be damaged. It is an active fault. The plates are moving. It has broken multiple times over the last couple of million years. There's nothing magic between the last time it broke and the next time. It's going to break again. It's going to keep breaking every so often. And we don't have enough data to predict precisely when this is going to happen. We just know that it's going to. And it may happen without warning. You know, we can't stop it, we can't predict it, but we can be prepared. I hope all of you have learned something about what Professor Frixel had to say. But once again, I emphasize that there is no doubt whether the earthquake will happen or not. The only question is when. So we must be prepared. Thank you.